Now those of you who watch my Excel 2010 training videos on macros will have an idea of what we're about to do here. But the definition, basically, of a macro is that it's a collection of actions used to automatically run a set task or a set of tasks. And for the example here, I want to go ahead and create a simple macro that will open up, let's say, the uh, contact form. I know you could argue and say, well, I can just come over here and double click and open it up, but that's not the point. The point is to introduce you to a macro by doing something simplistic. And then in the next couple of training videos, I'll show you how you can go ahead and create something a little bit more, well, let's say challenging, or in other words, that will automatically run a set task. And you can see how powerful it can be instead of just a simple task by opening up this form. So let's go ahead and get started by coming up here, click on the Create tab, go to the Macros and Code group, click on the Macro button. The layout has changed in the Macro window. As you recall in earlier versions like Access 2007 or earlier, you had the action column over to the left-hand side, the arguments in the middle, the properties down below. Well, it looked just like the uh, design view of a table. For example, if I go ahead and I right-click, go to the design view, we have the action column, then the arguments column, then down below we'd have the properties for the actions. Well, let me go ahead and close out. It's changed. And when it comes to choosing the actions, all you have to do is click on the drop-down arrow here, and it lists the actions, or you can choose them over here in the action catalog pane. You can just come over here and expand it by group and say, OK, I'm looking for a data import export action. And you've got the list here. Go ahead and hover over one, read more about it, and then when you want to add it, just double click it or click and drag. Or again, you can come over here and click on the drop down arrow. So for example, my first action is going to be called the echo. When I click on the drop down arrow, you can type in the word E, C, and if it doesn't pull up an action, let me hit the escape key to get back out of here. It's because Access isn't listing all the actions. Let me explain it. Come up here, click on the Design tab, and in the Show Hide group, it's got the action catalog. It lists by default 70 trusted macros that will run, even if the content has not been trusted. In other words, you can set up your Trust Center settings to say, OK, disable all macros. It'll still run uh, the actions from the action catalog, but the action catalog, again, only shows 70 trusted macros. If I want the remainder 20 action codes, then I can go ahead and click on Show All Actions. And you can see up here, and you can see the difference between the two icons. The action codes got a little lightning bolt, and then there's an action code, and then there's one with a yellow yield sign that means that, hey, it's not trusted. So it won't run if you have your macros disabled. Well, how do you enable and disable your macros? Come up here, click on the File tab, go to the Options, and then over here, click on the Trust Center. Then come over to the right, click on its corresponding Trust Center Settings button. And then on the Macro Settings, select that and say that you want to, well, in my case, I want to enable all macros. It's not recommended because it could be dangerous code. Well, I'm the one that's creating this, so I trust me. I'm not going to write in code that's going to screw me up. In any case, that's the difference between the two. When we put on Disable All Macros, it'll still run the uh, 70 trusted macros that are listed, the actions, but not the 20 that are not trusted. In any case, when I enable them all, then that's not a problem. Click OK, click OK, show all actions, click on the drop down arrow, type in E, there it is, starts pulling it up, echo, hit the tab key. When I do that, you can see the yellow yield sign that says, OK, this is an unsafe action. Why is it unsafe? Well, it's not a typical action that uh, Microsoft trusts, but hey, since I'm the one that's creating it and I know what I'm using it for, then I should be OK. Now, first of all, what's an echo? Well, if you hover over any part of it, it says that little pop-up hides or shows the results of a macro while it runs. So in other words, I've got a lot of actions, let's say, that I want to do. I mean, not really, but let's pretend that I do. As it goes through all those actions to perform it bouncing around, do you want to see that? Or do you just want to see the end result of your actions? Like, well, in this case, opening up a form. That's what I want to see. I don't want to see how it's made. I just want to see the end result. So I'll say, do I want the echo on? No. Click on the drop down arrow and say, I don't want to see how the cookies are made. I just want the cookie, the end result of these actions that I'm going to add. Now, granted, I don't have many actions, but nonetheless, I want to introduce you to the echo in case if you had a lot of actions to perform. Now, if you made a mistake and you added an action that you didn't intend to, come over here and click on that X and it removes it. Another way to add an action, like I said, you can use the action catalog. And you can come over here and try to find it by group, like let me collapse this group and expand that one. There's echo right there, again, the yellow yield sign. I can click and drag it over here, remove it, double click on it, it adds it, remove it. If I'm not certain of the group that it's in, 
come up here, type in echo, and as I start typing, it automatically starts filtering for the first couple of letters there. Then I can go ahead and double click on it, and then go ahead and uh, remove the filter. And let me collapse that. And then if I don't want to see the action catalog pane, then I can go ahead and close out of it. If I want to bring it back up, come back up here on the design tab to the show high group and click on action catalog. Okay. In any case, I'm going to close out of it. So we've got the echo. Let's go ahead and set it to no. I don't want to see all the actions being performed, just the result of those actions. Let's add a new action. Click on the drop down arrow. I think I want it to open. Pin, type in there it is open form just hit the tab key it adds it and it says okay what's the uh, name of the form click on the drop down arrow it's my contact form and then when it opens it do you want to inform view or choose another view design view print preview data sheet form is just fine now there's some other fields here instead of just opening a form simplistically we'll go over one of them the wear condition later on but for right now we're keeping it simple opening up the contact form let's go ahead and add another action click on the drop down arrow and let's add the comment. Select that. Comments, as you recall in the previous versions of Access, when it came to the macros, you can type in a comment saying, this one's supposed to do this. You know, so somebody else who comes in here doesn't go, let's see, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? I don't know about the echo. Let me go ahead and read more about it by hovering over it and see if I can guess the purpose of it. Well, go ahead and leave some comments. That way you can remind yourself or the next database user why you're doing what you're doing here. So the first comment, it's got nothing to do with performing action. It's just a simple comment that says, let's see, to hide results of the macro until the macro is finished. When I'm done, let me click off in a blank area. Turns it green, shows that it's a comment here. That indicates that that's a comment, it's not an action. Let me add another comment, click on the drop down arrow, type in C, and there you can see comment, hit the tab key, and let's type in, opens the contact form, click off in a blank area, so what I can do is I can take these comments and I can move them so I could say, let's see, to hide the results of the macro till the macro is finished, that's the echo. So how about if I move this up above the echo, or maybe I can move below it. I mean, you want to choose the way that makes sense to you, but if I put the comment above, then that will explain the action below it. So if I come down here, I can select it, come over here to the right-hand side, and then I can click in that uh, shaded blue area, click and drag that up, and put it at the top of the echo and then click off and that's how it looks. Or you can come up here, click in there and use the down arrow or up arrow to move it around. Okay. And of course this guy, let's go ahead and move him up. So I have the comment for the purpose of the action that I'm using below. Oh, and then if I'm not working on these uh, actions here where I can view all the fields, I'm done. I can collapse it. For example, you got the little minus sign to collapse the open form or if I want to expand it so I can go ahead and change the uh, form name and the form view, that's fine, but I'm done, so I don't need to see it all expanded, or if I wanted to expand all of them, come up here, the Design tab to the Collapse Expand group, click on Expand All, it expands all of them, shows us the name of the action and then the details of the action, or Collapse All, or just expand the actions and then Collapse the actions. I mean, I don't have much in the way of a comment, so when I click on Collapse All or Expand All, well, you can see right here that now that I click on Expand All, it wants to wrap it around, but when I click on Collapse, it extends the uh, comments. So for right now, that's the difference between the Expand and Collapse actions and all. Let's go ahead and uh, save our work. Click on the Save button. Three-letter prefix, MCR for macro, and then My. It opens up the uh, contact form. Click OK. Adds it over here in the navigation pane. If you don't see it here, click on the drop-down arrow and choose All Access Objects, and well, there we go. Let me go ahead and close out, so when I double click on it, it opens up the contact form. Yay! And then if I need to make any changes to the macro, let me go ahead and close out of here and say, okay, open up a different form. Just go ahead and right click on it, because if you double click, it's gonna run it. Or you can right click and run it there, but just go to the design view, go ahead and expand all, make your changes to these actions, you know, come in here, click on it, change the form, drop down arrow to another form. Anyways, you get the idea. Close out, and I can go ahead and save the uh, changes here, which I didn't make any, but if you right click and go back to the design view, the layout is what stays the same. If I save it, expand it like this when I closed out. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos, and for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.